Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you from Eastside Social Club, it's Marcher of the Week, Paul Wedding. With me as always, Leopold Knopp, and we'll be reviewing The Hateful Eight. So tell us all about it, Knopp. Well, The Hateful Eight starts with uh, the hangman, John Burt, right? Yeah. Uh, played by Kurt Russell. He is riding with, uh, what was her name? Redneck Jennifer Jason Lee into uh, Red Rock, I think the town is called, to hang her. Because when the hangman catches you, you yeah, hang. hang. They're running away from a blizzard, so they're gonna have to stop in this ho-dunk little coffee shop that is also a hotel. A haberdashery. A haberdashery, yes. They encounter on the road, also seeking refuge from this blizzard, a fellow bounty hunter, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Names aren't important. They also encounter Walton Goggins, who also needs shelter from the storm. That's the actor, his name is Walton Goggins. They get to this haberdashery, and there are like five other people in there, and nobody knows who anybody is, all just really fucking paranoid, and it's great. Well, you know, Nop, I came into this movie with pretty low expectations, because I really? wasn't... Because it was written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. That's... That kind of brings expectations up here. That's the thing. I'm not a fan of his last few movies. You know, Death Proof sucked. Death Proof sucked. And Glorious Bastards, I thought, was just okay. And it... Glorious Bastards was just okay. And Django Unchained, I... It was amazing. I simply didn't like. I, I it thought was it was... Fuck you. But I thought Tarantino was back in form for this one. This was very similar to Reservoir Dogs. It's practically a revisitation of Reservoir Dogs. It's the dialogue's on point, the plot's on point to his older movies. He kind of goes overboard with the dialogue. And oh, yeah. the gore and well, the, the cameos. He starts narrating at the beginning of chapter four in the final chapter. The dialogue, first of all, got a little too Tarantino-y for my taste because some of the characters would start talking as if they were Jules or Mr. Blonde and it just didn't fit in context with the setting or the characters for me. Remember he was making fun of Django, you remember? Mm -hmm. For like, Tarantino anatomy, skin, blood. <laughs> they had a lot of that in the gunshots. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple of characters who were poisoned and are literally vomiting blood. Monty Python and the Holy Grail with like the pressurized hoses of blood coming out of them. Or like Exorcist. Yeah. I also want to bring up the narration. It didn't really show you anything that you weren't seeing visually, so it didn't really serve a purpose. I thought it set to reestablish the tone. Here's the thing about the tone in this movie is if you take out the Quentin Tarantino cameo, if you take out the gore, if you take out all the flippant dialogue, this is a very grim movie. And I feel like Tarantino wanted it to be a very flippant movie because he wants all his movies to be pretty flippant. Narration served its purpose in that it reestablished that tone. But he wanted to have a cameo. He's Quentin Tarantino and he still thinks he's an actor. What do you think's the grimmest movie Tarantino's ever made? Like Kill Bill Volume 2? Uh, Kill Bill is one movie, Paul. Fuck off. And you really get what you pay for. Uh, if you're expecting a Tarantino movie, you're gonna expect excess, blood, violence, a lot of dialogue, and that's what this movie is. We keep talking about uh, uh, the endings and how there are at least three, possibly five different endings mm -hmm. uh, to this movie that have been told. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter because the setup is so fantastic. It's probably the toughest part to get through, but that's what makes the movie so great. It's a really tough movie to get through up until about 90 minutes in, and then shit hits the fan and you're like, oh, I gotta sit down and watch the rest of this because you gotta see how it plays really out. speeds up, yeah. The movie's gorgeous, obviously. Besides Tar it being a Tarantino movie, it was the primary selling point is that this movie is in 70 millimeter and it's, it's beautifully shot. The environments are lush, the colors are incredible. We still haven't seen the standard version. Um, hopefully it is as beautiful, yeah. but the colors in this movie are amazing. I didn't really like it, walking out, mm -hmm. but I wanted to see it again and I knew I would like it a lot better the second time I saw it because it is a fantastic movie. I feel like that's a reaction to a lot of Tarantino movies. Not that you come out not liking it, but that you immediately want to see it again to see what you missed. He's 
one of the biggest rock star directors in the world right now, but he also has almost Kubrick level artistic chops. Last call, not how many beers would you give Tarantino for this movie? Um, I would give Tarantino two or three beers for this movie, and then uh, the rest of the beers, it's a maximum of five beers, right? Yeah. I give him five beers, he's a Swinton Tarantino, and I want to see him fucked up. I'm going to give it a solid three beers. As always, Paul Wedding, Leo Knopp. Leo Knopp! Eastside Social Club, Hateful Eight, cheers. <laughs>